Hello, I welcome you uh, all in this third lecture on the uh, uh, program on uh, uh, joining technologies for the metals. In the last lecture, you have seen the need for uh, classifying the joining processes and uh, now in this presentation, we will see what are the different uh, factors on the basis of which joining processes can be classified. So, since there are two categories, means that there are two uh, broad categories based on which the processes can be classified. Uh, one is like say technological factors and another is approach uh, uh, being used for joining purpose. So, these technical factors are like uh, whether the, uh, the filler metal is used or not is one. Then second is the source of energy, source of energy whether uh, electrical energy is being used, mechanical energy is being used, radiation or any other form of energy is used. And then third is uh, uh, like uh, 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 in technical factors, the source of energy, then uh, whether uh, there is a fusion or uh, the pressure is is uh, being used. So, uh, and then one more classification or the basis which is arc or non arc processes. So, these are the four technical factors on the basis of which the, the different welding processes are grouped and the classified. Another one the approach of uh, developing the weld joints involving like say use of the cast weld processes where um, the, it is expected that molten metal will be fed from the outside for developing the jo joint. Then uh, there is a fusion welding processes where the melting uh, of the thing surface is, ach uh, is achieved uh, for uh, developing the joint and achieving the metallic continuity. And the third is uh, uh, like uh, um, third is like heat being generated through electrical resistance heating. So, resistance heating, electrical resistance heating like in resistance welding processes and then um, whether it is a pressure or fusion uh, welding. Uh, it is based on the actually whether the process is a solid state joining process. So, basically this the, the, the fourth classification or the fourth factor is here fusion and here uh, the solid state joining process. So, cast weld process, fusion weld process, resistance heating based processes and solid state joining processes. So, one by one I will, uh, I will talk about the different um, the factors and the, the processes fall in the different categories and uh, their uh, uh, the suitability to put in that particular category and uh, what are the related controversies or you can see the problems related with the classification in uh, of putting the particular process in particular category. So, like uh, the filler based process, the classification of the different process based on the filler. Like there are two categories where uh, no filler is used, those processes are uh, categorized as autogenous welding processes and uh, when, uh, uh, when uh, the filler is used, then the based on the filler like the filler is used, the filler can be of the composition same as base metal or it can be the different the base different from the base metal. So, um, all those processes like uh, initially the gas welding was the process which was was the only process where in joining of the thin sheets by melting the thin surfaces 
through the flame of the gas used to be achieved and this process was categorized as a uh, autogenous process. But uh, later on development of the like say the laser beam welding, electron beam welding and, uh, and where like say the, the melting of the thing surfaces can be achieved and without development of uh, um, without applying any filler the joint ca can also be made. So, so in this category earlier there was just uh, the gas welding, but the development of the laser welding and the electron beam welding processes which also do the same thing like uh, melting of the thing surfaces to develop the joint also fall in the same category. So, this classification was not found that fit like uh, defining the processes is autogenous welding just for the gas welding, but there are so many processes where autogenous weld is made without addition of the any um, uh, filler metal like in this category we also have the resistance welding processes. Uh, then uh, the those processes which use the filler metal, uh, filler metal uh, is optional there are certain processes where the filler metal is used or filler metal may be used or filler metal may not be used. So, we will talk first about the filler metal of the same base metal. When it happens the filler metal of the same base metal in that case the solidification of the weld metal is achieved only through the growth mechanism because uh, of the partial presence of the partial melted grains directly the liquid metal is consumed through the growth mechanism and this kind of the solidification is called epitaxial solidification, but when the composition is different the solidification is completed through the nucleation and the growth mechanisms. Uh, this is uh, one case where so in most of the cases uh, whether it is uh, um, uh, when the matching filler is used the solidification is achieved through this way. Then, uh, then you will see uh, there are certain processes which uh, uh, do not use any filler and it's certain processes where filler may be used or may not be used and filler is used compulsorily like the, the processes which use no filler, no filler or filler may be used and uh, the, the, the filler is used in any case. So, there are three categories of the processes. So, like uh, if you talk of the resistance welding processes, the no filler is used and uh, similarly or uh, the friction welding processes, friction welding, ultrasonic welding, uh, explosion welding, ultrasonic welding, uh, explosion welding. Uh, in these processes uh, the filler metal is uh, not used. Uh, so, here uh, some of these processes either they are carried out in the solid state or um, uh, where the uh, in the processes like resistance welding uh, over uh, uh, the heating either uh, to the par uh, partial melting takes place or the just softening of the metal is involved. So, there are certain processes where filler may be used or may not be used. They are like laser beam welding processes, electron beam welding processes, even the thin sheets of uh, thin sheets of the thin sheets welded using the gas uh, tungsten arc welding or the TIG welding processes or the the plasma welding processes, um, the filler metal may be used or may not be uh, used. Uh, uh, there are certain processes where filler metal is used in any case whenever they are applied. In this case, uh, the arc is established between the consumable welding process, cons arc is established between the consumable electrode and the base metal. So, these processes like shielded metal arc welding or is also known as a manual metal arc welding process uh, and the submerged arc welding process and the gas metal arc welding uh, process this is also known as MIG uh, and the submerged arc welding process, cylindrical metal arc welding process, electro slag welding process, electro gas welding process all these processes the filler metal is an any case is applied between the 
in is applied during the welding. So, this uh, is the kind of uh, the grouping of the different processes um, based on the filler whether the filler is used or no filler is used. This is the case where uh, when, when uh, just melting of the melting of fing surfaces fing surfaces is involved. Otherwise, in other processes filler metal may be used or may not be used. So, this is the classification of the different welding processes or the joining processes based on the um, use of filler. So, if you see uh, this uh, uh, classification is especially problematic in respect of the autogenous weld wherein the gas welding used to be known as autogenous welding process but uh, subsequent development of the laser beam welding and electron beam welding also was capable to do the same thing. So, this uh, led to the confusion over it. Then the source of energy is the another criteria based on which the welding processes can be classified. The source of energy is in the form of like say mechanical energy. chemical energy and uh, electrical energy and uh, radiation energy. So, these are the uh, the uh, different forms of the energies which are uh, used uh, for uh, uh, the welding purpose or for the joining purpose, uh, these are used uh, primarily for developing the heat. So, heat which will be used either for the uh, for the purpose of fusion or for the uh, like say the to facilitate the diffusion or for uh, lowering the yield strength uh, like in the solid state deformation processes or there is one more electrical resistance heating electrical mm, resistance um, so this is also actually using the electrical energy only so these are the uh, the, the, the the three or four different forms of the uh, energies which are used. So, if you see the chemical energy, chemical energy uses the chemical reactions for producing heat, so that uh, the melting of the fing surfaces can be realized. Mechanical energy uh, uh, is used uh, not just for developing the heat, but also for the deformation purpose, plastic deformation purpose either at the surface layers or uh, of the bulk material. So, uh, basically this uses the, the deformation and uh, the interfacial frictional heat. Uh, so, this chemical reaction for producing the heat, this approach is used in the processes like thermite welding and uh, the gas welding where uh, the chemical reactions between the, the fuel gas and the oxygen are used for producing the heat so that melting of the fing surfaces can be achieved and the thermite welding where the metal oxides are um, interacted with certain metals so that chemical reactions take place for producing the heat and in the mechanical energy where the heat in the friction and the deformation both are used for producing the heat and the, um, the deformation at the interface and this approach is used uh, in the processes uh, like ultrasonic welding, explosion welding, uh, actually this is used in uh, explosion welding also in the chemical uh, energy process, ultrasonic welding here, the friction welding and commonly known as friction, stir welding, forge welding. These are the joining processes which use the mainly the mechanical energy and then the electrical energy is used in all arc, all arc welding processes and the resistance 
electrical resistance heating uh, means uh, the resistance uh, basically the resistance welding processes uh, like say the spot welding, seam welding, projection welding, stud welding etcetera and the arc welding processes um, uh, like the sealed metal arc, gas tungsten arc, MIG metal in a uh, uh, gas metal arc welding, submerged arc welding uh, etc and flush wet welding etc so many processes which uh, fall in this uh, category and then the radiation in uh, based processes where uh, the uh, either electron beam or the laser beam is used for generating the uh, heat for uh, the purpose of melting the fine surfaces. So, if we see uh, the except the chemical energy all other forms of energy like radiation energy, K electrical energy um, uh, all these uh, come from basically the electrical energy. Electrical energy is converted in the mechanical energy or the radiation energy is in control way for producing the heat and using in the different forms. So, here the problem is uh, the origin in, mo in mechanical and radiation energy is in electrical energy and while uh, the, we are saying that uh, uh, the categorization uh, as a mechanical use of mechanical energy and the radiation energy. These are the form in which the electrical energy is used for the welding purpose in the two cases is different, but the, the main uh, energy which is used for generating the mechanical energy and the radiation energy is coming from the electrical energy only. So, this is the problem related with this actually it is the electrical energy only which is uh, used um, uh, in form of the mechanical energy or in the radiation energy. Uh, so, this is you can say uh, the non-clarity side wherein uh, uh, although the, act the form of energy which is actually used is the mechanical and radiation, but these come these are also coming from the electrical energy. Uh, so, yeah, although process can be uh, can be grouped like this, but uh, uh, there is an, a non clarity in the sense that uh, the radiation and the mechanical energies are being uh, are, are coming from the electrical energy. So, uh, it is it is not that uh, uh, right to say that uh, they are of the uh, mechanic using the mechanical energy or the electrical or oh sorry the radiation energies. Uh, now, we will see uh, the another uh, classification uh, based on the technical factor uh, which is uh, uh, the pressure or the fusion welding uh, arc and non arc uh, based processes. So, the, the first one is uh, the classification based on the arc or non arc based processes all those processes where heat uh, for the purpose of melting or softening is used uh, um, from the arc like say uh, the arc generates the heat for basically fusion and very rarely it is used for the softening purpose mostly it is for the fusion purpose. So, um, that uh, so, all those processes where arc is established for generating the heat for the fusion purpose, they can be put in this category like sealed in metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, submerged arc welding, uh, tungsten uh, GTAW, gas tungsten arc welding, plasma arc welding. Uh, like say similarly there is a carbon arc welding and uh, then uh, electro gas welding processes. So, all these are the processes where arc is used for generating the heat and uh, all other processes where no arc is used non arc based processes like uh, the friction welding resistance welding, uh, gas welding, uh, gas welding, thermite welding. So, all those processes where actually the arc is not used for can be placed in this category, but is still there uh, the, the, the controversies exist in, in case of the two processes. One is the flash uh, 
butt welding and another is uh, the electro slag welding. These are the two processes were found to be difficult to be placed uh, uh, in either of the categories uh, like the uh, flash butt welding or the electro slag welding. Why it is so? I will elaborate that uh, uh, because in uh, uh, the clarity does not exist in terms of uh, the uh, the way by which heat is generated in these two cases or the purpose for which heat is used in um, these two um, cases. So, uh, for that we need to see first the, the, the way by which these processes work in. So, flash butt welding basically in this process one and uh, there is one component there is another component and uh, if the two are to be welded so one is kept fixed and another is movable so the both are fed uh, with the power supplies this is one connected to the one terminal and this is another terminal and uh, when the, the one is movable is brought in contact with the uh, brought close to this one and brought in contact with this. So, uh, flow of current starts due to the source circuiting and then you will see the flashes are generated. So, these uh, flashes uh, are there for very short period. Uh, this helps to uh, as I have said uh, for cleaning purpose as well as softening purpose. And uh, once uh, if uh, and uh, once if it happened, then it is taken apart, and then uh, then it is uh, forced using heavy pressure to hold them together so that the joint is formed. So basically, these flashes are being used not for the fusion purpose, just primarily for these are the tiny sparks. These are not arcs. These are flashes, or you can say sparks which uh, will be just cleaning the surfaces and uh, maybe softening the, 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 the butting and uh, little bit and uh, once if it happened then they are forced uh, together. So here um, these are basically sparks not arcs or uh, the flashes so it is difficult to put in either of the category not the resistance normally it is kept under the resistance welding process but it is starts with the flashes and the sparks. Uh, but it is not that a stable arc which uh, will lead to the melting of the, the fing surfaces. Similarly, in case of the uh, resist, uh, electro slag welding process, electro slag welding process also find it difficult to put in category of the arc welding because the way by which heat is generated in this category, uh, it involves the use of both resistance as well as the arc. So, for that we need to see just the little bit principle of this process here these are the, mm, the components to be joined in the front view this is the base plate here it is full of the flux granular flux and our electrode comes here it touches to the back plate sparks are there. So, this, uh, this arc helps to initially melt the flux. So, melting of the flux uh, is achieved through the heat of the arc. So, heat of the arc is primarily in the beginning is used for the melting of flux. Once uh, flux is brought to the molten state and sufficient pool of the bath is uh, created, uh, the arc gets extinguished and the flow of current from the electrode to the base starts through the uh, the molten flux and uh, so the flow of current flow of current through molten molten flux uh, uh, causes the electrical resistance heating i square rt so this heat is actually used for the melting of the fing surfaces of the base metal as well as of the electrode. So, here once the sufficient pull of the molten slag is created, uh, the flow of current through the molten slag, a molten flux um, by electrical resistance heating 
generates the heat uh, and that heat is used for the melting of the fine surfaces of the base metal. So, basically the melting or the fusion of the fine surface of the base metal is achieved through the I square RT heating due to the flow of current through the molten flux not due to the arc. But since this process is starts with the arc for melting of the flux and thereafter um, uh, it is uh, 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 which is used for the melting of the fine surfaces. So, it is difficult to put in either of the categories uh, neither resistance welding nor uh, the arc welding processes. Now, uh, we have uh, the other uh, process like pressure and the fusion welding. In fusion welding, wherever the melting of the fine surfaces is achieved and the solidification of the molten pool is allowed under the normal gravitational conditions without any external force. So, if this is the case, then we will see that it is the normal fusion welding. Sometimes uh, if the, the melting of the uh, pool, if the molten metal is generated and then it is allowed to solidify only under in confinement under pressure conditions, then that is uh, categorized under the pressure welding conditions. So, all those processes where Molten metal is generated through uh, the fusion of the fine surfaces or means weld pool is produced through the fusion of the uh, fine surfaces and thereafter solidification takes place under the normal gravity conditions that is categorized as a fusion welding process and if uh, uh, if either uh, if either heating is done just for softening purpose or for um, deformation of the uh, interf uh, deformation at the interface or deformation in the uh, in form of the bulk um, at deformation at the bulk level to have the metallic continuity using the pressure or even if the fusion is involved if it takes if the solidification takes place in very confined conditions under the pressure then it is characterized as a pressure welding. So, pressure welding either involving use of the deformation uh, either bulk or the interfacial deformation for developing the joint uh, like ultrasonic welding processes, uh, friction welding, um, all those explosion welding, all those will be coming in this category, resistance welding processes because here confinement, If even if the molten metal is formed, it uh, solidifies in very confined situation and the gravitational Mm, uh, and if the solidification takes place under the gravitation condition, then it is categorized as a fusion welding process. So, our all arc, arc, gas, arc welding, gas welding, thermite welding, in all those cases where fusion uh, occurs in the in under the normal gravity conditions, then they are put under the category of the fusion welding process and other others where uh, the deformation is involved or the fusion is in uh, solidification is in uh, is taking place in very confined uh, conditions under pressure then that will be uh, categorized as a, those processes will be categorized as a uh, pressure welding process. This is most uh, acceptable and a non controversial kind of the classification by putting the process in the fusion or in the pressure welding category. Apart from that, uh, th there is uh, another uh, big uh, group of the welding processes involving the, um, the approach of uh, developing the, um, the weld joint uh, that is about, uh, so that classification involves the use of cast welding processes. So, welding processes like the thermite welding and the electro slag welding they fall in this category. In thermite welding basically uh, between the, the components to be joined the molten metal is uh, prepared outside and then it is fed between the fine surfaces. So, this is typical the processes where the just like in casting um, the molten metal is prepared outside and then it is put into the into the mold uh, for developing the weld joint. But uh, it is not so in case of the electro slag welding, in case of the electro slag welding uh, uh, and the, the molten uh, metal is generated uh, between the fine surfaces itself 
and then after solidification the joint is formed. So, this is the different than the thermite welding in true sense thermite welding is the cast welding process, but in electroslide welding where the molten metal is generated between the fang surfaces only uh, it is a bit different from uh, the cast weld process because in casting molten metal is not generated in the mold. So, same is not true for the electro slack welding process. Then next uh, uh, based on the approach of the uh, developing weld joints uh, the fusion welding process wherever the fusion of the fang surface is achieved for developing the joint will those are categorized. So, all arc welding, gas welding thermite welding uh, 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 sorry uh, the gas welding um, the laser welding electron beam welding wherever the fusion of fang surface is achieved for developing the weld joint they are categorized under the fusion welding processes. So, our all arc gas electron beam laser beam etcetera all those processes where fusion is involved can be categorized under the fusion welding process and uh, then resistance welding processes where I square RT heating principle is used for generating the heat uh, are kept under this uh, category. So, our all resistance is spot welding, seam welding, projection welding, stud welding and likewise there are a number of resistance welding process which are put in this category the basic idea is that wherever resistance electrical resistance heating is involved for developing the weld joint and then solid state uh, welding process. Solid state welding process involve uh, there are two categories where in the low heat generation or the high use of high heat is involved. So, basically uh, uh, the solid state joining process they will be using the deformation. Now, they, this deformation may be interfacial or it may be the bulk. So, in case of the interfacial deformation uh, the very limited heat is also generated. So, like uh, in this category uh, like cold pressure welding ultrasonic welding explosion welding explosion welding mainly the interfacial deformation is involved in very less heat is generated while lot of heat is generated and although very limited deformation is there uh, like the processes in use of the diffusion bonding. So, diffusion bonding uh, uses the high heat to facilitate the diffusion at the same time your friction welding and friction stir welding based processes all these use lot of heat and because of that uh, it is categorized under the category of the uh, solid state uh, welding processes with the high heat. So, uh, in this presentation you have seen there, the, the, there are two basic uh, factors based on which uh, the different uh, joining processes can be classified. One is the technological factor and another is uh, the approach of developing the joint and uh, this kind of uh, classification actually helps in to see how the different processes can be brought together or they can be separated based on the fundamental similarities or the dissimilarities. So, thank you for your attention for this presentation. In the next presentation, I uh, will talk about the, the different uh, ways by which heat is generated for joining purpose and the purposes for which heat is used uh, as well as uh, thereafter the requirement to protect the pools uh, for uh, developing the joints. Thank you for your attention.